I don't know if you know people who have lucky charms that they really are convinced help them the particular brooch or a, uh, a pair of socks there's there's you know there's cricketers who wear the same socks unwashed out to the match to convince that they will get out for a duck if they don't wear them uh, all sorts of people have magic charms and things that uh, they think are helping that, that are maybe uh, in terms of religion God's smiling on them because of this object uh, maybe it's got nothing to do with God it's just the spiritual forces of the universe is looking out for me maybe lots of new age kind of ideas in that it turns out that the new age isn't new age at all that lucky charms false assurances and things have been around for thousands of years and we're going to see that's what was happening in the folk religion of Israel as we continue in Ezekiel today and that God's judgment is coming Coming and how when you put your hope in these false things uh, it's not just that you're leaning on something that cannot hold your weight but actually God hates it that's what we're learning today as we see that God is God and we should be leaning on him let's pray father thank you for your word thank you for your Ezekiel even though it's been uh, hard to hear these words uh, that brought condemnation to your people Israel we thank you for your love in the midst of it in saving the the remnant but also please help us to learn what it is you hate that we might not trust in false things but we might trust in you and your word uh, father when people claim to speak for you we pray that we be discerning uh, and so teach us how to do that today in Jesus name amen we're in Ezekiel chapter 13 and remember we've seen the glory of the Lord has been lifted up from the, within the temple and has moved to the edge of the temple. It's now moved to the uh, edge of the city and uh, facing out to the east and heading over towards where the exiles are. And as God goes, we see God speak again about the people in Jerusalem and what's happening there and what they're relying on. And so Ezekiel chapter 13. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel who are prophesying. Say to those who prophesy out of their own imagination, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Lord God says. Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. Your prophets, Israel, are like jackals amongst ruins. You did not go to the gaps or restore the wall around the house of Israel so that it might stand in the battle on the day of the Lord. They saw false visions and their divinations were a lie. They claimed this is the Lord's declaration when the Lord did not send them. Yet they wait for the fulfillment of their message. Didn't you see a false vision and speak a lying divination when you proclaimed this is the Lord's declaration, even though I had not spoken? Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. You have spoken falsely and have had lying visions. That's why you discover that I am against you. This is the declaration of the Lord God. My hand will be against the prophets who see false visions and speak lying divinations. They will not be present in the council of my people or be recorded in the register of the house of Israel, and they will not enter the land of Israel. Then you'll know that I am the Lord God. Since they have left my people astray by saying peace when there is no peace, and since uh, when a flimsy wall is being built, they plaster it with whitewash. Therefore, tell those plastering it with whitewash that it will fall. Torrential rain will come and I'll send hailstones plunging down and a whirlwind will be released. When the wall has fallen, uh, will you not be asked, where's the whitewash you plastered on it? So this is what the Lord God says. I will release a whirlwind in my wrath. Torrential rain will come in my anger and hailstones will fall in destructive fury. I will demolish the wall you plastered with whitewash and knock it to the ground so that its foundation is exposed. The city will fall and you will be destroyed within it. Then you will know that I am the Lord. After I exhaust my wrath against the wall and against those who plaster it with whitewash, I will say to you, the wall is no more and neither are those who plastered it those prophets of Israel who prophesied to Jerusalem and saw a vision of peace for her when there was no peace. This is the declaration of the Lord God. Now you, son of man, face the women among your people who prophesy out of their own imagination and prophesy against them. Say, this is what the Lord God says. 
Woe to the women who sew magic hands on the wrist of every hand and who make veils for the heads of people of every size in order to ensnare lives. Will you ensnare the lives of my people but preserve your own? You profane me among my people for handfuls of barley and scraps of bread. You put those to death who should not die and spare those who should not live when you lie to my people who listen to lies. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. I am against your magic hands with which you ensnare people like birds and I will tear them from your arms. I will free the people you have ensnared like birds. I will also tear off your veils and rescue my people from your hands so that they will no longer be prey to your hands. Uh, then you will know that I am the Lord because you have disheartened the righteous person with lies when I intended no distress and because you have supported the wicked person so that he does not turn from his evil way to save his life. Therefore, you will no longer see false visions or practice divination. I will rescue my people from your hands. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Well, it's a stinging condemnation, isn't it? Uh, and I take it there's actually two groups that he's speaking to. One is the false prophets who are still over in Jerusalem. The message says to them that uh, they, uh, their predictions of peace and security uh, are not going to stand. But also there's a word at the end to, to those who are doing the same amongst the exiles. I, I take it that's what happened is happening at the end. It could be that the the women with the magic trinkets are uh, back in Jerusalem, but it, or maybe they're in both places. But either way, what is it that these people have been doing, and what is it that the people of Israel have been trusting and relying on? Well, there's there's a few different things there, isn't there? There's there's the words of the false prophets who say God is going to bring peace. He's bringing peace in our time when there is no peace. It's intriguing because in Jeremiah chapter 7 from memory, uh, got the, the, which is back way before this exile, uh, you know, uh, before, it, Jeremiah's written uh, and the first invasion of Assyria happens uh, during Jeremiah. But early in chapter 7, he says there's all these prophets prophesying peace, peace when there is no peace. And the same lines picked up here in Ezekiel. Now, years later, after the first lot have been taken, the walls have been destroyed. Uh, it's been chaos and havoc. And still these false prophets, even though that has happened back in Jerusalem, are saying, peace, peace, it's all going to be okay now. Look, the worst is down. The damage is going to be rebuilding. It's going to be happy days. Uh, and so there's the false assurances of those who who are imagining a time of peace and, and they're putting it in the mouth of God who's never said it. And God is condemning them, not only for speaking on his behalf when this is not his message, but for giving false assurances. One of the other things that they're leaning on uh, and trusting in is the new wall of Jerusalem. And he, he says it's so pathetic. I mean, look at it. It's it, you know the whole thing had massive chunks taken out of it in the invasion when uh, when Babylon came and uh, it, it was wrecked. Uh, and what have you done to restore it? You've put whitewash on it. That is, you've you've just cobbled a few bits and pieces together and put some plasterboard around it and and just yeah you know, put a cement render over the edge and painted it white. And you think that's great. It looks like a wall but it's actually flimsy. There is nothing there. And the prophets, part of their message is, wow, look, there's a wall. We're safe now. Uh, how, how can anything happen to us? Well, the big solar wall that was there just a couple of years before, it didn't protect them. Why would this piece of gyp rock that's in the way? And so they're being told to rely on this thing that's actually insubstantial, pathetic, just cannot bear the weight that they're going to put in it. But then the third thing is these women prophets who are making what seem like magic charms. Uh, they, make, they call them magic hands. I take it it's a piece of material, uh, whether it's a glove or a, a piece that comes down off the, the sleeve and is, is lying over the hands. 
Uh, and they're saying this is a sign. If you wear this piece of clothing, this material, then you will be protected. God is for you. That's a way of doing it. And they've been making these magic veils as well to wear that, you know, you show that you are loved by God. You have this protection and it's like the cricketers were putting on the same unwashed socks. <laughs> it's a magic charm. That's what these things are. And, and God is condemning them. And you see, these magic charms are nothing. They're useless. In fact, they're worse than useless. They bring in my wrath. And the condemnation, because this is what God's people have been doing for years. They've been looking to all the wrong places for security. They've been putting their hopes in insubstantial, hopeless things, false words, false walls, uh, false objects of protection. And it's not on. It's not on. And God is furious with it. And he's going to do something about it because he wants to protect his people. They are being led astray by those who are peddling their wares and telling their false visions and so this whole chapter is a condemnation of them and uh, they think they're speaking for god they think they're making magic protections that will bring god's blessing they've got a wall that looks like it's god's old wall that it's, it's going to keep them safe in the day of judgment and it will not happen god is going to come and they will be the first ones destroyed uh, as God cleanses his people. This whole exile is happening because of God's wrath and they're not learning from it. In fact, they're reverting. They're going back to the old systems and the worship of false things and they're putting security in false things. It might not be the gods of the land. We've seen God condemning that, that that worship is still going on in, in Jerusalem. But there's these other things as well that people are putting their hopes and security in. And so I guess the challenge to us is what do we put our hope and security in? Have we got our lucky charms, our magic trinkets, our uh, things that we think, well, if we take them away, sometimes we can have them around church and it's not real church if we don't have those things here. But a lot of times it's just things in our lives that give us security and peace of mind when actually um, they won't. Uh, God is the one who can give us security. He is the one we need to put our hope in. And he's the one whose word we've got to listen to. Here is where we find security for our souls in God's promise, in God's uh, son as he rescues in the future that God has given us, where there is no more mourning or death or crying or pain. That is where there is true peace. We are at peace with God now through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will have peace for eternity because of the Lord Jesus with him in eternity gathered around his throne. And there is no peace really anywhere else. There's no security anywhere else. And so God's calling us to put aside those things. And so if you've come out of another religion or come out of the new age and you're still holding on to uh, the spells, the scrolls, the trinkets, the cross, the other, you come out of Catholicism and you think that the saints that you've got uh, are worthwhile, the Jews there, you've got to put them away, get rid of them. When the people in Ephesus came to Christ, they had a huge bonfire and got rid of them. And, and maybe physically there's things that we need to put on that we're putting our trust in that are not the Lord God, uh, that actually are a false assurance. Uh, get rid of them. Uh, physically get rid of them if there's objects like that. Uh, but spiritually get rid of them and learn to lean on God and his word. Look to the prophets who have spoken, whose words have come true. That's why there's tests of prophets really early on in the scriptures in the book of Deuteronomy. When a prophet comes and it doesn't happen, you know that they're lying. It's not from the Lord. It's people's own imaginations. Maybe they're just self-deceived. Maybe there are false spirits at work presenting as an angel of light, giving these things so that when Muhammad comes or when Joseph Smith comes, were they making up that they say it's all angels? Uh, or was it something they just invented? Were they being manipulated? Either way, false prophets who've led people astray. And so get rid of those things. Do not listen to the false prophet. Listen to the true word of God. We have it here. It's sure, it's secure. The Lord Jesus is our saviour and put your hope in him. Father, thank you that you do protect your people. You've given us promises of life. Help us to know that we are at peace with you now through the death of the Lord and that we will have peace for eternity with you because of him. Uh, but we pray that our security would always be on you. If there are things that we're holding on to from our past, we pray that we might get rid of them. Give us courage to do that, to let go of those things that we've been lied to in the past about, that we've still got some assurances in of magic charms or other things. And we pray that in everything we might learn to rest on the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us not to be sucked in by false words, 
Uh, and we pray, please, that you'll help us have discerning spirits that understand what is from you and not from you as we test it against the scripture and we look to what you say and to your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the author of life, the giver of your word, the one who is the word become flesh and in whom all assurance is found. Thank you for him. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless everyone. God willing, catch you for another devotion tomorrow. See ya.